recording? Yes. Okay, so this is a short tutorial on how to use the occipital structure scanner. So here's the scanner. Uh, the power cord kind of plugs right in here, and then it attaches to your iPad, whatever iPad you have. This is an iPad Air 2. They also make it for iPad Pro and, and brackets for other models. And you slide it onto your iPad, and then there's this little lock. So that little lock snaps it into place and then you plug into your lightning port. Once you've done that, your uh, 3D scanner is all connected. Then you want to turn on your iPad, enter in your code. Now you all know my code. And you want to get the correct app. So the app that I've had the most uh, luck with is actually the scanner app that uh, they recommend to use that a subtitle provides. So to actually make a scan, this is the view, and then we can turn over to see our model. Here's our model. This is Philip. Say hi, Philip. Hello. Okay. So when I hold up this, there's a box. That box is the scanning area, scanning volume that I'm actually going to be using. And I want to move it and kind of scale it so that I'm just getting um, the part of Philip that I actually want to scan. I notice uh, I'm about two meters away from him. If I get a little bit too close, uh, if I get a little bit too far, it'll kind of lose its view. If I get a little bit too close, it'll lose its view. If I angle things a little differently, maybe it's angled too high, I won't get him in view. Uh, you kind of need to get the angles just right. Uh, I think most of the interest uh, of people watching this tutorial might be to actually not get the uh, face. We will actually want to get the arm. So I find the best uh, way to get an arm scan is to kind of have the recipient, if possible, kind of hold their arm out uh, from their body and kind of hold it up like this, exactly like Philip is doing. So what we'll do, we're going to try to get a good view of his hand. Now, it's, it, can, it can be tricky to get the angle just right. If you're a little bit off, it won't work. Uh, if you get the angled um, up a little bit too far, it won't work. But as long as you're kind of level with the actual thing you're trying to scan, and kind of get a nice steady hand and hit scan, we'll see that all that colored in area is going to start turning um, white. You want to try to limit this box to get as small as you can so you don't get any extraneous features. Uh, and We can go ahead and click scan and we'll see what happens. So we're getting all of his shoulder, we're getting his whole arm and all of his fingers and we filled it in. Now to fill in the rest of the scan we kind of need to start moving up to get the top of his hand and we want to move down to get the bottom of his hand and the bottom of his arm. So you kind of be walking around to fill this in. And then to keep getting scanned, we walk around him. So as I'm walking around, it'll hold up a message, please hold still so we can capture a keyframe. Um, you don't always have to obey that advice. Not always necessary. So as I'm walking around, we can see that the scan is filling itself in. Kind of slant up. So we've got an upward view. And go down to get a downward view. So as I walk around, the scan is getting better and better. Sierra, would you do me a favor? Walk across. So you're going to see Sierra walking in the background. You can have people walking in the background. That does not affect the scan. It's chosen its box. That volume of the box that it's actually using, that's what it's going to scan inside of. So if you have things that interrupt with your scan, it's not going to be a big deal. And by starting the scan where I did, uh, Philip's head isn't going to get in the way of my scan. If I keep trying to go all the way around him, then I'm going to lose the view. I can put the model back into view, and it should pick it right back up. Okay, if I really need to get a scan 360 degrees, I can raise the scanner up way high, higher than my cameraman can capture, and I can keep Philip's arm in view and walk all the way around, but I don't need to. So, Philip, you can put your arm down. And I stop my scan. And we can see, even though I didn't walk all the way around him, I still got a good scan. That's going to be good enough for me to get... Um, information on to get his whole arm. If you had the whole elbow, you'd have to make your bounding box a little bit bigger. So that's the shaded view. Uh, we can also do a color view, and that'll kind of show you the color camera that you're getting. 
Uh, so the color's not perfect. There's a little bit of parallax kind of between the color camera and the 3D scan. Um, but this is a good enough model that we can read it into mesh mixer and then actually get a scan. Then uh, the big problem with this particular structure app is you can't save this model. After you actually scan it in, you need to email it to yourself. So you get your good scan, mail self, check and make sure you get that email and then you can actually start doing some with that in Mesh Mixer or whatever your favorite um, 3D scanning uh, program is. So we use the structure scanner to get scans of arms.